welcome back. This is going to be pretty much our standard look for quite some time. So it's for the best, but here we are. Oh, you can't see my sadness, but this is a problem. Donning this mask, I've obviously learned a couple things. One, I'm a little bit more claustrophobic than I had previously thought. And two, my breath isn't nearly as delightful as I thought it was. Um, welcome to my the birth of my channel. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while. The name of my channel is The Tipsy SD. Um, and uh, <laughs> I wonder why that is. So as I was saying, I've been wanting to do this for a while. And a little bit of my background, I have been an esthetician for 14 years. And if you don't know what an esthetician is, that is somewhat, I, we're in the cosmetology industry. We focus on skincare, hair removal, makeup. Um, and then there's different branches of it, of course. Uh, I happen to also be oncology certified and medically certified. So I know some stuff, not a lot, but I know some stuff. And the concept was makeup and skincare for people who are a little bit on the older side. Me being in my late 40s, I love watching makeup tutorials, but, um, you know, women in their, you know, mid, early, mid 20s, sometimes early 30s, they have different skin challenges than I do. Um, that being, you know, fine lines, sometimes the skin sags a little bit, you've got your discoloration, and of course, while everybody claims that their skin is dry, obviously the older you get, the drier your skin gets. So, someone who is, let's say, 48, 48, cheers, they may have different skin challenges than someone who is, say, 25, or even 30, or even 35. Now the first video I made uh, was the eyebrows. That was kind of out of necessity because a lot of people were asking me about their brows. So I figured this time we're gonna go more makeup. But then I realized, you know, everybody's now going to be wearing masks. So what better time than to do something to focus on the eyes. Now it's not going to be um, a full-blown smoky eye evening look. That's going to be something fun, something that's going to draw attention to the eyes. And of course, we are going to finish off the entire face. Uh, we are going to be doing a brown, peachy, bronzy look. And the reason why I chose that look, it's got a little bit of shimmer in it. Uh, and the reason why I chose it is because that look pretty much looks good on anyone. If you have blue eyes like mine, it's going to make your eyes stand out even more. If you have green eyes, it's going to make it look them look deeper. If you have hazel eyes, it'll make them look brighter, and if you have brown eyes, it'll make them look more sultry and seductive. So you really can't go wrong with a really pretty brown, peach, bronze look. Now obviously I have fair skin. Um, this look will work for people with darker skin tones, but obviously there's going to be some things that are going to have to change. I will try to navigate you through those changes where they need to be. Let's have our... Here's to getting started drink. First things first, you want to get your hair out of your face so that you can see your features. And of course, the first step in any good makeup look is skincare. Skincare is very personal, it depends upon what results you want to see. I personally focus on anti-aging and radiance, so I'm starting with Huanja Su Sakura's Peeling Radiance Pads. It's K-Beauty, it's a leave-on exfoliant, and I like it because it gives me a bright, smoother texture. Take one of the pre-moistened pads, rub it all over your face, staying away from your eyes. And then of course you pat in the remaining serum on your face. Next, I'm going to prep my skin for the next step, and I'm going to be splashing on some Macar Balance Toner. It's got a great rose and neroli smell, and it gives me a little bit of extra hydration. I always moisturize my lips as well. Today, I'm using Fresh Sugar Mint Rush Freshening Lip Treatment. It's got this really fresh, minty smell to it, and it's got metal foam oil, grapeseed oil, and sugar as a humectant. I do a lot to my skin, so I need a lot of calming. So next I'm doing Lue by Jean Seo Balance Hydrating and Calming Serum. The hyaluronic acid hydrates and it calms my skin. 
I use it as a serum, as an extra boost, but you can also use it as a moisturizer if you're a little bit on the oilier side. Finally, time to moisturize. I'm using Glam Glow Glow Starter Mega Illuminating Moisturizer in New Glow. I love this stuff. It's a little pricey, but first of all, it smells like baby aspirin, which I love that smell. But it's got more of that hyaluronic acid in it. It's got ceramides for moisture retention, green tea to energize, and it's got these highlighting pearl particles in it that just make your skin sparkle. Now we are all prepped and ready to go, and we're going to start the makeup, starting with the eyes. First we prime the eyes, and we're using Sephora's Prime Eyeshadow Primer. It does a pretty good job of not crossing any creasing, and it's translucent. You're going to dab it on, and then you're going to smooth it over the eyes with your ring fingers until it is tacky. I'm using an SL Miss Glam GG5 Super Fluffy Blender Brush to apply Sephora eyeshadow in the color Let It Snow to my entire lid. Now I've selected a color that's really close to my skin tone. You should do the same if this isn't it. Find a little color that is closest to yours. And don't be afraid to give it a really good coat. Now as I said, I usually do my foundation first, but this palette that I'm testing had high fallout to it, so I decided to go ahead and do my eyes first. The palette is from Shina B, and it's got some beautiful high shimmer colors as well as some neutral mattes. I'm starting with the crease using the color Winwood, and using the Luxie 231 Small Tapered Blending Brush, I'm swiping back and forth in my crease. I'm starting with a light touch because I'm going to build intensity as this look goes along and I'm also blending out the top above the crease using small circles and the same swiping technique that I use to apply. In selecting this shade, you want to go with something one to two shades darker than your skin tone and stick with a matte. Now we're moving to the lid. Using the La Russe LR005 Tapered Blending Brush, we're going to apply South Peach to the outer two-thirds of our eye. You're going to start with patting and blending it into the center by dragging it into the center of your eye. You can also take some of it into the crease, but make sure you don't go above where the windwood is placed. The peach color that you use should be slightly darker than the crease color. So if you've chosen a different crease color than I have, make sure your peach is just slightly darker. You can then go back with the Luxie 231 brush and use Winwood to blend the colors together. If you need to spice the intensity back up on the South Peach, go ahead and do that using patting lotions. Now it's time to contour your eye with the Japanese 232 eyeshadow brush using Cafecito or any deep brown will work and you're going to concentrate on the outer third of your eye. First pat the color in on the very outer portion creating a small wing and then start to blend by dragging it inward. You can also go into the crease about halfway across your eye but remember not to completely eclipse South Peach. You can then go back with a La Russe LR005 and re-intensify South Peach and then of course the Luxie 231 and re-intensify Winwood. You can go back and intensify anything that you feel needs to be intensified by using the patting motion to kind of spice up the color where you need it to be. You're probably also noticing some fallout but don't worry about that, we will clean that up before we move along. Now we're going to start highlighting. Using our Luxie 213 eye shading brush, we're going to apply Port O Princess into the inner corner of the eye. Start with patting motions, start in the inner corner, and then gently begin to swipe towards the center of the eye. You can also swipe up a little bit into the crease, but try not to overpower your contouring too much. Using your Japanese 213 eye detailer brush, Pat heat into the middle of your eyelid. Keep patting to intensify the color and slightly blend out the edges by swiping side to side. If you need to blend those highlights into your contour at all, use your Luxie 231 Small Taper Blending Brush and the color Winwood to blend all of it together. You can then go back using the corresponding brushes to intensify any areas you need. 
Now it's time to get rid of that fallout using either toner or eye makeup remover. Next up is lining your eyes and we're starting with the Sephora Retractable Waterproof Eyeliner in Matte Deep Chocolate. I love this eyeliner because it's creamy and it's easily blended and smudged and there happens to be a smudger included. Line your lid close to the lash. There's no need to be precise because we're going to smudge it. And then you're going to do your tight line, making sure you push that liner into the lashes. Now take the smudger and start to smudge, making a small wing. Now we're going to use the Araceli Ojos Perfectos Liquid Eyeliner in Brown. I bought it because it's rare to find a liquid eyeliner in brown, but I absolutely fell in love with the thin tip because it makes great precise close to lid work as well as a nice wing. Use little dashes to form your line and extend it just slightly past your eye in a small wing. Take a look at how big of a difference the eyeliner makes. It's really making one eye pop more than the other. We're going to take a quick break from the eyes for a moment and come back after our foundation is done. We're going to start by priming the skin with Tarte Quench Hydrating Primer. I really like this product because it can function as a moisturizer instead of double, doubling up. You're going to start in the center of your face and smooth it out to the perimeter, patting it in after you've spread it on. You want it to feel tacky. Um, don't use too much or it will pill. We're going to use Wander Liquid Foundation in Nude Illusion and add a little bit of Wander Glotion to the product. It's going to be just like a small dot. You can mix it on your hand. And then using the Sephora 47 Pro Foundation Brush, you're going to spread it around the different areas of your face. Don't worry about streaking. We're going to fix that a little bit later with the blending. Make sure you blur it into your hairline and also go down your neck. You don't want any major lines of demarcation. I'm going to use a damp Juno & Co microfiber lemon drop sponge as my blending tool. You're going to start by tapping it around your face, blending out all the rough edges and all using feathering motions to go down the neck and also blending it into the hairline. You can use it to clean up your eye makeup to give your wing a little bit more of a crisp look and kind of clean up any excess fallout that you may have. I'll be using Hey Honey Trick and Treat Concealer in the color Light to Medium. I'm going to start by tapping it on with my fingers, making sure I bring it down below my orbital bone. Then I'll be using the Complex Culture Precision Concealer Brush to kind of get into the corners and spread it down and make it a little bit more even. Again, don't worry if it's got some streaks because we're going to blend that out as well. Using the Juno & Co sponge, blend everything out. Make sure you blend that concealer down your eyes and also work it up around your eye makeup to give it a, a nice, crisp, clean look. Using a MAC 170 brush, we're going to apply some Sephora Matte Perfection Powder Foundation in the color Fair Neutral underneath our eyes. The brush really helps kind of buff out the cream, but it's going to give you a little bit of coverage and set it without giving you a chalky look. Also cover any other areas that may need it with a tapping motion. We're going to go back to the eyes now and you can see that they're really starting to pop and we're going to start with our brows by using the Chella Tantalizing Taupe Eyebrow Color. We're going to start by drawing small dashes along the bottom to give it its shape. And then we're going to do single lashes usually going on the inner corner, uh, kind of get moving up to simulate actual hairs. Start about mid on the top and kind of close off the holes and finish your tail and then use a little bit of color in the holes as you go along. I'm using an M158 Morphe angle liner and spoolie brush to comb through the color. It kind of diffuses that harsh line and makes it look more realistic. And I'm setting the brows with BRB Brow Gel. I'm going to brush up and then brush to the side. Keeps them in place and any unruly hairs are going to be tamed. I'm going to use a Morphe M167 brush 
and use go back to that Miami palette, the color Everglade, and pat a little bit under the eye, basically the outer two thirds. Start with using just a very little, build up to the intensity that you want. Now we're going to use the Laura Geller Ink Incredible Waterproof Gel Liner in Fool's Gold to kind of spice up the inner corner and also do our waterline. If you need to do a little bit of cleanup, use that MAC 170 brush and the Sephora Matte Perfection Powder. Now we're going to curl the lashes with the Emite Rose Gold Professional Eyelash Curler. It's an important step because since we're focusing on the eyes, we really want them to curl up. Now we're finishing off the eyes with some Sephora Lashcraft Big Volume Mascara. We're going to do a couple coats. And I'll be honest with you, I never feel like the eyes are done until mascara is on. The first coat's going to be just covering the lashes, making sure everything has got something on them. And the second coat's going to focus at the lash line. You're going to wiggle it and start pulling it up through the rest of the lashes. Whatever is left on the brush, you can put on the lower lashes. But when you're dealing with mature eyes, less is more because it tends to run a lot. And the hard part of this look is over, so let's have a celebratory sip of wine. For the rest of our complexion, we're going to be using the Balm Girl Powder Palette. And using the SL Miss Glam GG3 Angle Brush, we're going to be applying the Bronzer Bleaker. We're going to start for contouring, doing the hollows of the cheeks, and of course drawing that up onto the temple as well. You want the color to be strongest in the hollows and then blend it down, but make sure you don't blend it all the way down to the jawline. If you feel like the line is too harsh, you can always use your MAC 170 brush and the Sephora Pressed Powder Foundation to blend it. Now we're going to warm up our face a little bit with the Morphe M509 Deluxe Pointed Blender Brush and the blush color Houston. We're putting this great peachy blush on our apples of our cheeks, drawing it back towards our temple, blending it into the bronzer. Also doing the perimeter of our forehead, the sides of our nose, and our chin. We're going to use that GG3 brush again and dip back into Bleaker and kind of carve out our chin. And then using the MAC 170 brush and the pressed powder to blend. Then we're going to go back with that Morphe M509 brush and take Houston down our neck. I'm going to stay with the Morphe M509 brush and dip into the Bourbon blush, the second blush in the palette, and just kind of perk up my cheeks and give them a nice rosy glow. These are all buildable colors, so you can use as much as you want until you feel like you've got the right look. Now we're going to use Sparkle using the Morphe Large Shadow Fluffy brush and use the highlighter fifth in the palette and place that on the top of the cheekbones. You're going to start at the back and pull towards your apple. Just make sure you keep this away from any fine lines. So if you need to drop it down a little bit farther on your cheek, you can. Because remember, highlighters, they highlight. So if you're putting it over fine lines, your fine lines will be highlighted. I never fall in love with a look or feel it's finished until I do my lips. So I'm finishing off with Stila Beauty Boss Lip Gloss in Synergy. It's a great color. It's nice and buildable. I'm not really a fan of overdrawing your lips because it definitely looks bad on mature skin since we have lines around our mouth and it kind of sinks in. But do make sure your lips are fully covered and just keep applying until you feel you have the right color. There you have it, our stunningly gorgeous look. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know I enjoyed making it. Practice, have some fun. If you have any questions, you can always ask me in the comments. So please subscribe to my channel um, and of course like this video again. It's the Tipsy SD. Um, I'm thinking once I get to 250 subscribers, I'm going to do a giveaway. But I hope this video finds you healthy and happy and hang in there, stay inside, and I will see you in the next one.